Hey there, and welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor Josh, and I am so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, paper, your phone, however you want to take notes, and get ready for today's message. Let's jump right in. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I struggle with codependency. I struggle with anger. And I go, and I am getting recovered. And God is moving me from where I was to where he's calling me to be. You don't have to be afraid if you're in this place and say, hey, I have all of those things that are going on. I saw in that video, I need transformation, I need change. Come on out Thursday nights at 7 p.m. We're going to be there together. We're going to work through our stuff and get wholeness and healing is in that place. If you want to show up there, come on, meet me. I'll be there. I'll be there with you. And I'm going to work through my stuff with you. It's so great to see each and every one of you guys look amazing this morning. Ooh, wow. We had a great Resurrection Sunday last week. We saw so many. Come on. We can clap for that. Our king is alive. We serve a living God. We had such a great time. 21 people gave their life to Jesus Christ. Hosts of families were touched by Jesus Christ. And it, and, and it amazes me every single time that I see somebody raise their hand and say, I want to follow Jesus. Because I remember as a kid, I, I said and, and underneath a tent at R.W. Shambach, I, was, I said, yes, I want to follow Jesus. I, I received Jesus. And God has transformed my life, has taken me from one place to right here where standing in front of you. But guess what? God's not done with me yet. God's not done with you yet. God's still working on you. He's still bringing you closer and closer to the place that you are already and then that you are continuing to become today. So we're, we're starting a brand new series, and I get the express pleasure of kicking off the series. I thank you, Pastor Mike, our lead pastor, for entrusting me this morning to share a message about powerful prayers in the Bible. We're going to be talking about powerful prayers, and I pray that you're encouraged throughout this series. There are going to be resources for you to learn to begin to pray powerful prayers because God has called us to be a voice in this generation. God has called us to pray when we don't know what to do. We have like a cheat code. I call it a cheat code that we can go right to the living God and say, hey, guess what? This is going on, and hey, I need, I need help. And he's like, I'm, I've been waiting. I'm right here. And he helps us. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to learn to pray powerful prayers, simple, powerful prayers that we can see throughout the scriptures. And today I, I pray that you can experience that in your own life. Oftentimes when we pray, we don't know what to say. We're like, what am I going to say to God? Well, we're going to give you resources. Don't worry. Next week, keep coming back. We're going to give you resources. And today I want to look at a text in 2 Kings 6, 14 through 17. I'm going to read this text right now. So he sent horses and chariots and a substantial army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. Now when the attendant of the man of God had risen early and gone out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was circling the city. And his servant said to him, this is hopeless, my master. What are we to do? And he said, do not be afraid. For those who are with us are greater than those who are with them. Then Elisha prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes so that he may see. And guess what? The Lord opened the servant's eyes and he saw, and behold, the mountain full of horses and chariots and fire all around Elisha. Let's pray. God, I thank you, Lord, that we can receive from your word today, that we can see something, that our eyes will be opened and enlightened to what you're saying to us. We thank you for giving us a hope and a future that, that you're not done with us, that you're continuing to form us into your likeness today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As a kid, I loved birthday parties. I love birthday parties so much that I celebrate my birthday an entire week. I don't care if you don't like it. It's tough. It's my birthday. <laughs> I'm going to be on some birthday behavior, if you know what. Yeah, come on. <laughs> so I... I, I love birthdays, and, and as a kid, I always loved being invited to a party. I always love a party. Invite me to a birthday party. One day, I was invited to this birthday party by my friend Brandon Ferguson, no relation. Hey, Brandon, if you're watching, hi. He's not my cousin. I'm not related to him like that. So he handed me a card, and he says, my birthday is going to be on, in August at McDonald's. Perfectly cool. Great. I'm so excited. I love McDonald's. Anybody love McDonald's? 
Wait, please raise your hand low if you're on a, on a diet and the person, is your accountability partner next to you? You're kind of supposed to hide that hand said, but I see that hand right back. I see that hand. I love McDonald's. I was so excited. The Happy Meal. Back in the day in the 90s, the Happy Meals were the best. Come on, Pastor. I'm preaching good right now. The Happy Meals were the best. You had the DuckTales toys. You had the Batman toys. You had the Barbie uh, ice capade toys. Not, I love ice skating, by the way. It's just uh, Barbie ice capade. Maybe I might want the Barbie toy. Maybe not. No. <laughs> and I was so excited. I was thinking about the French fries and all the burgers. And I was starting to do my burger down. French fries and burger. Boom, 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 French fries and burger. Come on. French fries and hamburgers. And I was so excited about going there. So I jump in my car, in the car with my father, Lascelles Ferguson, and my mom, Tony. We jump in the car and we're driving down in the Bronx. Doo, doo, doo. And all of a sudden, I see the golden arches. Oh, hallelujah, golden arch. And then I see the golden arches and they pass me right by. I went, Dad, no, Dad, where are you going? There, go back this way. He says, no, we got to go this way. And my mom turns around and tells me, John, we're not going to McDonald's. We're going to McDuno Place in the Bronx. McDuno Place? They don't got no french fries there. They, got no, they don't got the hamburgers I like. They don't got the, the, the Big Mac with the sesame seeds and the special sauce, or, you know, the lettuce and tomato. They don't have that there. So we end up at Brandon Ferguson's house, and I was so disappointed because I had the wrong perspective on the right situation. I was at the right birthday party, but I personally felt it was at the wrong place. I want to be at McDonald's with the plate place and the slides and all that stuff. I, that's what I wanted, but I didn't get that. In this story, we see that the servant's eyes needed to be opened, but I feel like we're like the servant in this story, where we see a situation that's surrounding us and we get so afraid. Of, oh, no, what are we going to do? And we don't see any results. We're facing hardships. And sometimes we pray, but we don't get anything from it. We get no results. If you look at the story, the servant was in the right place. He was in a place, we're going to read in a little bit, called Dothan. He was in the right place with the right person doing the right thing, serving the man of God, washing his underwear, cleaning, and making sure there's food and all this good stuff, but there's still an army coming towards him. And you may feel like that you're in the greatest moment of your life. Things are working for you at work. Things are, are going, and, but just like all these things are coming against you. But God, I served you my whole life. Why is this happening? But today I pray that prayer that the prophet prayed over, over the servant. Lord, open their eyes that they may see that there are more with you than against you this morning. There is more with you than against you. You may have come in here feeling like you're a nobody. You may be feeling suicidal. You might have come in here with depression and anxiety. But I want to let you know today, in the name of Jesus, there is more with you than against you. God is going to open your eyes so that you'll be able to see what he's doing in your life. You don't have to look downcast anymore because God is, is moving. The chariots of fire are right there. You need to begin to look and see what God is doing in your life. Life. I pray, Lord, open their eyes that they may see. When you see a no, no way out, you can pray this simple, powerful prayer. Like, I don't know what to do with my fantasies. I don't know what to do with my kids. Lord, open my eyes that I may see. And then God will begin to reveal himself to you. Begin to show you the things to come. Let's take a look at the story one more time. And we're going to talk about Elisha. Before there was Elisha, there was a prophet named Elijah who Elisha served. Just like the servant is serving Elisha in the story. There's a prophet called Elijah. Can everybody say Elijah? Elijah. Can everybody say Elisha? Elisha? I mix those up all the time. Okay, yes, said it too fast. Elijah, July. <laughs> Elijah. Let's say it one more time. Elijah. Elijah. Elisha. Elisha. And so Elisha served Elijah all, for a really long time. And then one day Elijah turned to him and said, what do you want from me? And Elisha said, I want a double portion of what's on your life. He says, I want a double portion. And, and Elijah says to him, some weird, it seems cryptic at the time. He says, if you see what I see when I go, you can have what I have. If you see what I see, you can have what I have. Come on, we're talking about seeing. If you can see what I see, you can have what I have. And so this is where he picked up. One day they were walking together, and then Elijah was taken to heaven by a chariot of fire. We're going to see that in a few minutes. Chariot of fire took him, and down came this thing called a mantle. It was a cloak that signified that Elisha was the new prophet. 
that Elisha was the new God, man, God, the man of God that God wanted to use in that time. So let's look at 2 Kings 6, verse 8 through 17. Now the king of Aram was making war against Israel. He consulted with his servants, saying, In such and such place shall be my camp. But the man of God sent word to the king of Israel, saying, Be careful that you do not pass this place, because the Arameans are coming down there. And the king of Israel sent scouts to the place about which the man of God had told him, so he warned him so that he was on his guard there more than once or twice. Now the heart of the king of Aram was enraged over this matter, and he called his servants and said to them, Will you not tell me which one of us is for the king of Israel? One of his servants said, No, my lord. The king, but Elisha the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. What kind of prophet is that? Come on. There's nothing hidden from the Lord's sight. He was able to speak exactly those things. And so he said, go and see where he is so that I may send men to take him. And it was told to him saying, behold, he is in Dothan. So he sent horses and chariots and a substantial army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. Now when the attendant of the man of God had risen early and gone out, and behold, an army with horses and chariots was circling the city. And his servant said to him, this is hopeless, my master. What are we to do? And he said, don't be afraid. For those who are with us are greater than what's with them. Elisha prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes so that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the servant. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots and fire all around Elisha. This is, this is one of my favorite stories. Uh, the servant was reading the situation wrong. Like I read the birthday invitation wrong. I read that invitation wrong. So the servant read the invitation, read this thing wrong. In my life, I prayed for many years to have a baby boy. I used to pray right here in this family room, vacuuming it in the stairwell. Lord, Lord, if you send me a wife and a baby, Lord, please, I'm single. I'm serving your ministry. I'm giving a tithe of my life to you. God, help, please. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Are you there? <laughs> and so I would pray and I would pray. And then I got married to this wonderful woman named Cassandra. And she's. <laughs> I, I could shut my, my, my message right now because that's the, that's, oh, yes, Lord. That's, I receive it, yes. So I, I married her. And then one day after worship practice, I, 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 she says that I turned to her and told her, we're having a son. I don't remember saying that to her. She's like, I'm not, I'm not having no son. I'm not even no pregnant. <laughs> that, that's not how she talks. But she's like, I'm not having a son. I'm not even pregnant. I said, okay. And then I remember sitting in a fan prayer one time and hearing it more clear. You're going to have a son. I said, okay. I received. She got pregnant and we were having this baby. And one night we were laying in bed together and she gives me the wife nudge. All the husbands know what a wife nudge is. Wake up. Wake up. I'm bleeding. I said, what? You're bleeding. What? And I start to panic. And I start to think the worst things. That might be you in, in your life. Sometimes when you get bad news, you think the worst of the worst of the worst. And so we got to go to the hospital. So we shoot over to the hospital. And we're sitting there in the ER. And, and they're running tests. And there's not much a husband can do at this point. Right? But get in the way. Doctor, what are you doing? Sir, sit down. Can I? You're not trained, sir. Sit down. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, and I'm, and I'm like just sitting. And what I was taught to do by my parents and my grandparents was when you don't know what to do, begin to open the scriptures. Begin to look at the Lord's perfect law of liberty. And I, and I found a story about Hannah when she was praying for Samuel for a son. And she said this, O Lord of heaven's armies, come on. If you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, I will, then I will give him back to you. And in that moment, I told the Lord, I said, my son is yours. No matter what the outcome is, I trust in you. Scariest moment as a dad that so far is saying, God, I trust in you. Sometimes we don't know what to do with our kids. It gets to a point that we can do so much for them. But then there's a point where we take them in, in, in your hands and say, Lord, here are my kids. Do something in their life. I felt totally helpless. Oh, my master, what are we going to do? I'm, this is hopeless. And in that instant moment, the doctor comes in, crosses his legs, puts his hand out like this and says, everything is fine. 
I said, doctor, you can't come up in this place. You know what kind of folk we are? You just can't come in this place and be so relaxed and nonchalant that everything is okay. I'm freaking out, but God is faithful. In that moment, God shifted my perspective and said, son, before you were ever a father, I've been a father. I'm going to handle the business. Let me do what I can do. Let me do what I can do. And I, I said, okay, God. And guess what? My baby just made one year. That's John Mark Daniel Ferguson, Jr. And he's such a joy, and he's always laughing. Even when he's crying, he goes like this. Starts clapping. And I was like, I've never seen that in my life. And it's such a refreshing thing to experience. It took the Lord opening my eyes. In our lives, I want to let you know that you can see something but have no vision. I know that I'm looking at something. I know we're looking at a, a, a terrible situation, but I don't understand what I'm looking at. My visual perception, I may see one direction of the situation, but guess what? God's perception and perspective is what we need. It's going to be totally different. The vision of the servant was impaired. He could not process the word of the Lord, right? The word of the Lord came through the prophet. He says, they are more with us than with them. Relax. And he's like, oh, still freaking out. And he says, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. He couldn't process the word of the Lord. We're going to talk about vision versus sight a little bit. Sight is a function of the eyes that allows us to physically see. Vision is in the mind's eye. You can have sight but no vision. Ask somebody who wears glasses. Where are my glasses people in here? Who wear glasses? That they won't let you drive or get the license without it. You know, you went to the DMV and they're like, tell me what this is. And you're like, Q, bear, orange, yellow, number four. The color, what's that, the color three? What is that? I don't know. <laughs> that... You can have it with no vision, but vision is to understand what you're looking at. It's possible to have vision with no sight. In Proverbs 29, 18, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Right? So if you drove without your glasses, glasses people, what would happen? Accident. <laughs> you would perish. The question I have about this story is, what if the servant never saw what Elisha was trying to point out to him? He would have been overcome by fear. Because you couldn't see. I can have the ability to see, but not the ability to see clearly as to process what I'm looking at. So today I pray that your eyes are open, that you can see the opportunity of blessing. That you can see God moving in your life. To see the hope in the future God has provided for you today. That's my prayer for you today. It's a simple prayer. Lord, open their eyes that they may see. See that you're working. This is why we can begin to bring prayer together. And we can bring the word of God with us. The word shows us the truth. And prayer helps us align with that truth's perspective. So through prayer, we can align ourselves with what God sees. I have an illustration here. And I love illustrations because I'm just an old church kid, church kid, kid. And I love illustrations, Bible illustrations. Show me some cool things. Yeah. So today I have this wonderful cylinder of water. And I have this arrow. Right here. In which direction is the arrow pointing? Can everybody in the room point to that direction where the arrow is pointing? Everybody in the room. I see that hand in the back. Yes, no. Tessa, please point that way. Thank you. And, and as I begin to pray, let's, let's look at what happens. I, I, this represents prayer. And as I begin to put prayer in my life and say, God, you know, show me the way. Teach me your way. Help me to understand your truth. Help me, Lord. Let me just move this over a little bit more. Help me, Lord. Help me to understand what you're doing in my life, Lord. Help me, God. And what did it just do? What did it just do? Tell me, what did it just do? It shifts directions. Guess what? The arrow, the arrow didn't change. There's still an issue happening over here. But what changed? The way I'm looking at it. The way this is showing me. Prayer begins to give me a different set of lenses to be able to see what God is doing in my life. It's time. As you pray, it shifts you. It aligns you with what God is always doing. There is, is there nothing too hard for the Lord? Yes. There's nothing too hard for God. As we pray, it changes us and gives us that confidence. We begin to experience his presence that if God is for us, then who can be against us? That God is on our side. And that's the power of prayer. The word of God shifts what seems impossible into possible realities. You know what, I prayed that McDonald's place would turn to McDonald's. 
But my perspective had to change after I looked at the invitation and enjoy the people that I was with. Let's look at what Romans 12, 2 says. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test or prove what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Today, I don't know about you, but we need to shift in the way we perceive. I need to shift from the pattern of this world because I feel it sometimes drawing me to be afraid when things don't go the way that I thought they were going to go. When I, when I see a situation that seems impossible, when I had that impossible situation with my son, JJ, it was pulling me. I could feel the pattern as well say, be afraid. You might lose him. You'll, God will never, remember, see, maybe you didn't hear God right, but you'll have a baby. God's promises aren't faithful, right? You can hear that scratching at the top of your mind. But when we begin to renew our minds with prayer and the word, it begins to cast off. That, that's why we can take every thought captive and make it obedient. Anything that tries to rise above the name of Jesus, we can make it obedient to the name of Jesus. That's what prayer and the word can help us do. There's something that we pray here at Family Church to help us change our vision when we pray or we're studying for the scriptures. Uh, Ephesians 1 verse 18 I pray the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. So when you don't know what to do and you don't have any hope, if you came in here depressed today, so Lord, open my eyes that I may see. See the hope in the future. God has a plan for your life. God has a plan. He has a purpose for you. You were designed for a purpose to serve God. You were designed to be used by God in a powerful way. You're not beneath. You're, you're, you're the head and not the tail. You're above only and never beneath. God has called you. Won't you just receive it today? Open your eyes that you may be able to see. So what can I take away from this story? What can I take away from the story? And when, I, when you read the scripture, see what God is speaking to you. Simple, effective prayer. What I learned from the story is that simple, effective prayer can change our perspective on complex issues. Simple, effective prayer can change our, transform our perspective on complex issues. Time after time, simple prayer has moved great mountains. Let's look at what James 5.16 says. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So as I was reading, I was looking at some of the original language, and this is what I could gather from it. When you pray, it's active. When it's active, it has the power to accomplish many things. So the reason we don't pray is because we don't know what to say, so it's not active, right? Nothing's happening. But when you open your mouth and you begin to pray, it's activated. And guess what? It's powerful because you're righteous because of Jesus. It's not in your own name you pray. You don't pray in John Mark's name. No, you pray in Jesus' name. And that's the name that's above every name. So the situation has to change. Because it's the kingdom of God that infiltrates your situation and the kingdom, it's king's dominion, it's God's dominion that changes and shifts your situation. So things that were out of order have to come in the order of Jesus Christ. Things that were misplaced have to go back into what God has said. So you can speak over your finances and speak to your wallet. Grab your wallet and say, in the name of Jesus, I command finances. Lord, I pray for supernatural wisdom in Jesus' name for my mind so I can understand the numbers. You might have not did good in math in school, but guess what? God can transform your, renew your mind, hello, and you can begin to know and understand what God's will. God doesn't want you broke. God doesn't want you poor and not and struggling and you don't have no money to give. And every time the, the offering plate passes, you're like, I wish I could give. God wants you abundant and have an abundant life. You need folks who can pray for you. That's the second point. You need to have the right people around you that can give you perspective shift. You're the sum total of your five closest friends. Look at it, your entire life, look at it. You're like, oh, but I had them since the city, there's my people, oh. We came up together, we fought mad heads together, my boy, oh. I can't give them up, dog, oh. Yeah, if you, you want to go to the next place God is taking you, some people have to stay where they're at unless they want to go. Unless you say, hey, I'm about to head over here and into abundance. You want to come along? They're like, nah, I like my life like this, no. Then you come on. Come on, there's more for you. And sometimes you got to leave them because God has great things for you. You don't want to be at the end of your life saying, well, I hung out with my friends. And, and, and God's like, what did you do with the life I gave you? Well, Jesus, and they were cool. You know, I moved from the Bronx. They're my papa. Get okay. Yo, this is my guy. God's going to say, it's all, oh, come on. Just, come on. Just forget it. Come on. And so here's what Matthew 18, 19 says. And I love this scripture. It says, again, I say unto you that if two shall agree on earth as touching anything 
that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father who is in heaven. And this is for the married folk, married folk. Listen, you guys need to be touching and agreeing. Oh, you didn't hear me. I don't think you got what I said. You need to be touching and agreeing. You need to be holding each other when you're praying. Lord, I just thank you for this wonderful woman. And oh, thank you for making it so beautiful. It's hard to yell at somebody you're praying for. You can either pray or yell. You know, you hold them, right? And you pray for them. Fellas, pray over your wife. When you see she's having a low day and you see the enemy attacking her, you say, in the name of Jesus. I command it to come off of her right now. In Jesus' name, you begin to pray over your wife. You begin to pray over her. Honey, uh, wives, when you're laying in bed and he's sleeping, you pray, Lord, I thank you that he's the man of God. I thank you that you're using him in a mighty way. I thank you that everything that he sets his hands to will prosper. Because it only benefits you. If he gets more anointed and starts to move in, in, in different directions and starts to make a little bit more and starts to flow in his giftings, it's just going to benefit you. He's going to come home less angry. I don't know what's going on with this job. He's going to begin to step in his true anointing. So, honey, wives, begin to pray for your husbands. They need it. Don't just be like, oh, why did he leave his underwear on the floor? It's right there. He could have just put it in. Why does he leave his underwear on the floor? No. Lord, I thank you. Will you pick it up? I thank you, Lord, that he, he begins to do the right thing. I thank you. You got to trust me. Ask Miss Cassandra, I'd do it. It's right there. I, it's, I could have. So you need to be praying. And if you're dating in the room, if you're looking, I want a husband. Lord, send me uncle, man, please. please oh. If you're praying and believing for a husband, you need, you need somebody who can, you can pray in front of. You need somebody who can be praying for you. He's got to bring more to the table than a bucket hat and like a, a Honda Civic. You know what I mean? Like trying to be cool, you know what I mean? It's no problem if you have a Honda Civic, it's good, but at least know how to pray, <laughs> brother. <laughs> Brethren who are looking for a wife in here, you need a sister that can pray. She can't just be just fine. <laughs> beauty, charm is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. You need a woman who can, who can pray. Sometimes when you're going through your bad day, you need a woman say, in the name of Jesus, you come here, that's my man. In the name of Jesus, I come, I come against the devil, the work. Of the... You need some old school kind of praying over your husbands and over, over, your, over your boyfriends. If you can't pray in front of each other, maybe you should consider some other arrangements if you know what I'm talking about. I'm not telling you that for married folk. Listen, that, I'm not saying to leave your husband, please, or leave your wife. I got to make that disclaimer. That was for dating people. You're not. Listen. So let's listen to what G. Uh, Campbell Morgan says. Faith is never the imagining of the unreal things. It is the grip of things that cannot be de demonstrated to the senses, but which are real. The chariot and horses of fire were actually there. Elisha already knew about the chariots and horses because he saw his master be taken up with a chariot and horses of fire. He already knew about those chariots because he could read the Psalms of David and to see all of those sort of things in the scriptures. He said, oh, God's with us. He brought me this far. He, he took, you don't know where he took me from, servant? He took me from plowing a field somewhere in the middle of nowhere to the prophet that you see standing in front of you. Listen, God is able to do more, exceeding and abundantly. When the servant saw the chariots of fire, it brought him peace. What an unveiling of that moment. It brought the servant peace. The anxiety goes. The fear is gone because his eyes were open. In our lives, we're often too focused on what's around instead of what's above us. The chariots came from above him in the mountains came and he could see the chariots. That's why the psalmist says, I lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. That's why he can say that because he knew who was on his side. In your life, you need to begin to lift up your eyes and begin to see who is with you. You may need peace today. You may need joy today. You may need to see your way out of a situation. You may have come in here suicidal. Say, this is it, I'm done. I'm just going to come see what this Jesus and church thing is about, but I'm not, mm, I'm good. But today I pray that your eyes are open, that you may see your hope, see the calling of God on your life. God has great things for you. This is not the end. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that works within you today. You just got to let him. Like we were talking, do a new thing in me. You got to open your heart and say, God, have your way. I know my life is in shambles. I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I, I don't have any hope. Here's my life. Transform me. Change me. You need to know who's on your side today. God is with you. He's Emmanuel, God with us. God is with us today. You can see your way out of your situation. You may feel surrounded, but I pray that your eyes are open. There are more with you. There's more for you than against you. There's more for you than against you. There's more for you than against you. All you need is simple, effective prayer. 
The most effective prayer is help. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name, help. <laughs> and you'll see mountains move. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name, and I thank you that your word says, and you'll see mountains move in your life. Simple, effective prayer. Surround yourself with people who can pray for you. So today we're going to have the care team up here in the front to pray after the service with you. If you say, hey, I need somebody who can pray for me. I, I, I can't see my way out of this situation. Let, me, let, let somebody pray for you today. For this rest of the series, I want to ask you to take a step of faith every day and sit and pray, Lord, open my eyes that I may see. And I can't wait to hear the testimonies of what God is going to show you throughout this series, what God is going to bring into your life throughout the series. And if, if, you, if a miracle happens, if something great happens, write it on the connect card because we want to stack them up. We want to see what God is doing in your life, seeing what God is doing in the church. And today, if you come, came in here and said, you know what, I don't know anything about this Jesus and this come and see great things. I don't know nothing about that Jesus. I just came here because someone told me the, the LED screen was cool and the band was good. <laughs> and there was going to be some cool people in the church. But if you want to know that Jesus that can transform your life, that can give you a brand new perspective on things, that can show you some things to come, that can save you from, from death and bring you into life, I want you to pray a prayer with me. We're going to call it, we call it the prayer of salvation. I want you to pray this prayer, but believe it in your heart. Praying it is not going to do anything, but b believing it will. It will transform your heart. You confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. So let's pray. Everybody together as a family, we're going to pray this together. God. I come to you in Jesus' name, and I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me and rise again to bring me a new life. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died and rose again. Today I receive your free gift of salvation. In your name I pray. Amen, amen. Come on. Thanks for watching today's message. My name is Pastor Josh, and if this message has impacted you in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a few things. First, I would love if you would subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 and 11.30 a.m. Second thing is, I'm going to ask that you would take a next step on your journey, and we'd love to help you do that. You can head over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today. Have a great rest of your day.